right, uh, I'm Lauren. Uh, I've been working on SEO for Macy's for just about five years now. Uh, previously, I was agency side and ran all things digital for a mid-sized agency, working with B2B, B2C, um, kind of across the board. So um, today we're going to talk about some things that we've been seeing on our side in terms of mobile search, uh, some trends, some interesting changes, and then some of the things that we're doing to try to maximize traffic and try to improve e efficiency across organic and uh, paid. So 2016 is the year of mobile again. We've heard this, I think, every year since 2009, 2008, maybe. Um, and every year, it's this is the year. It's going to tip the scales. And I think last year was actually the year that tipped the scales. We saw that you know, a lot of search, a lot of overall traffic was coming then from mobile as opposed to desktop. Um, and we saw a lot of changes in mobile also, which led to a lot of us scrambling to try to make sure we're in a good place. Um, one of the biggest things that we know about was mobile get-in. I think this is overhyped a little bit, a little bit dramatic. Um, but what it did is make us all take mobile very seriously from an SEO standpoint. Um, I know for my team, it really did kick our butts into getting some changes put through that we had been putting off for a while. Um, luckily, they gave us a bit of a heads up, as we all know. It's the only time we've gotten that heads up for a, an algo change. Um, so it did let us make some changes that we thought could be impactful. And at the end of it, we actually did see traffic go up, we saw ranking go up, um, and we weren't impacted. So, so we knew what we needed to do um, to get there. Obviously, some basics, making sure the usability is on point, making sure that it's mobile friendly from a Google standpoint. Um, and we know Google has tools here to help us get there from a technical side. So um, working with these tools, we made sure that we were in the good place so that we wouldn't be impacted by these ranking changes. Um, on the paid side. Um, obviously, again, most of the search now was coming from mobile, which made us know that we needed to be in a good place on that side as well. So that meant product listing ads, local inventory ads, um, really optimizing for the product as much as we can um, and looking how to create better efficiencies there. So really in the early part of this year, we were in a good spot, both on the paid and the organic side. I mean, we were seeing it growing heavily year over year. So we thought we were great. We had celebrated, we patted ourselves on the back that everything was going well and it was going to be a great year. And then we saw this. Anyone here who's in search, can you tell me what, what happened here in July? Anyone remember? That would impact, this is our mobile non-trademark session growth. Anyone? So in July, this is when Google made a SERP change on mobile. Um, what they did is they increased the paid from two ads to three ads. And it seems like a very small change, but it had a very large impact on our paid and organic. And we saw that increase then as the season went on, um, to the point where you see it's an almost exact inverse between our growth patterns. Overall, what we saw is that we actually lost traffic. It's not that it just shifted buckets, but we saw a bit of a decrease overall for search uh, overall. So this is an example of one of, our, uh, one of our big search terms that it's a big brand for us, Coach. Um, this is on mobile. We rank number two, right behind Coach. Usually you'd think that would be great. We'd be seeing a lot of visibility, um, a lot of traffic coming in. This is three screen swipes before you see our ad, um, or our organic, because you have all of your ads now, you have um, additional site links that they rolled out, you have additional um, branded and knowledge graph items that essentially push organic as far down as possible. It makes this almost be like page two. And so we're not seeing the same amount of traffic coming in on mobile as we were before. And a lot of that is then going to paid. So what happened there on the paid side? Let's look a little bit. Um, text ad impressions rose, clicks rose. That sounds great. Uh, we also saw our PLA impressions rise exponentially. All of that sounds good, except for you're paying for this. And so, yes, we're seeing additional clicks, we're seeing additional traffic, but those were clicks we used to get for free. And those are now transitioning over into our paid side, which wasn't accounting for that increase in budget. So the SAM budget had to expand to meet that growth. Um, they knew that if they didn't up their budgets and take that traffic, it wasn't going to go to organic anymore. It was going to go to the competition who was doing the same. Um, 
But in doing that, they also decreased efficiency, because as you spend more in mobile, we know it doesn't convert as well, so you're going to pay more and get less out of it. Um, huge issue for us, and something that we knew we had to do something about. We also, on the organic side, saw a huge deficit. Um, what was left for us? If being number two wasn't enough, what could we do to get get to traffic and get that lift? Um, it was definitely a big challenge, and it was something that we had to look at really more holistically to find some solutions. So this is uh, industry, not Macy's specific, but it reflected a lot of the growth patterns we saw in organic. So this is year-over-year -year growth, quarter by quarter. Um, Growing 63% in Q1, um, I think Macy's organic was at about 80 to 90%, dropping to 4% in Q4, and that's about on par with what we saw in Q4. Obviously, Q4 being holiday season, it was not ideal for us. Um, so coming into this, we, about mid-year then, decided we really needed to do something, um, and we needed to look at really creative solutions, because Google wasn't going to stop, they weren't going to pull back ads, they weren't going to make less money so that we could have our free clicks. So we needed to find a more creative way to get traffic and to get ranking where we could actually see a lift. First in organic, uh, two pieces here is finding more white space, places where you're not seeing as many paid ads where we can rank and actually get traffic from that ranking. Um, doing that by going deeper with our keywords and going up funnel. So first, talking about going deeper. Um, this is about torso and tail. Places where you would see less ads. Obviously, you're still going to see some ads, you're still going to have some competition, but it's not quite as bad as the head terms. Um, so how do we do this? Um, Ian mentioned earlier SEMrush. It's also a favorite of ours. So their domain versus domain is something that we use to expand our keyword pool. Looking at, uh, here is Nordstrom and Macy's, you can do a, a comparison of places where Nordstrom ranks, Macy's doesn't, um, and then sort it for things that have low competition and no existing content on the Macy's site. So we know that there is an opportunity to increase our content, to expand our reach, and really cover more of this blue on the right that um, we don't currently have. So first, it was expanding that way. And then based on that, we're trying to figure out how to build out content and how to do that in a way that is scalable for an organization like ours. One of the things that we found, and this was a big opportunity for us, and it was pretty low-hanging fruit, um, was our facets. So when you're searching through our site and you're looking for dresses, um, all of the different colors that you want to select, all of the different sizes and styles are all in facets. And it was all Ajax-based, um, not crawlable, not RESTful URLs. So it was essentially pages that Google didn't see as pages. They didn't see them as unique. This was an easy area for us to scale very quickly by making some technical changes to make those facets SEO friendly. It essentially expanded our pages and our content by hundreds of thousands, but unique because of those qualifiers that were color or size, different trends. Um, and we saw that then in the, the latter part of the year. Again, almost uh, 800,000 searches, and that's still growing today. And it's something that can flex as we have different assortment, as we get additional products in. Because it's something that was a technology fix, you see all boats rise, instead of finding you know, additional pages one by one and trying to manually create things. Um, so scaling is definitely important here if you want to see the lift, especially with a large organization. The second piece is on going up funnel, um, finding editorial content. And really, it's answering these questions of you know, what do your customers need before they get to you and after they get to you? So when they're not looking to make a purchase, but they're considering something in their lifestyle, when they're thinking about their wedding, when they're thinking about prom, when they have something that's going on that maybe they're researching, but they're not quite searching for a blue dress or for a tuxedo. Um, and how can you create content that serves their need and has a value add, but isn't trying to just sell them, you know, that is actually answering a question of theirs, so that you're in the consideration set and you get them back when they're more mid or lower funnel. For us, what this means is uh, seasonal content, it means trend-based content, um, and then a lot of what we call how-to content. So how to tie a tie, how to uh, dress for an interview, things like that that aren't necessarily 
purchase content. It's not things that um, you'd be doing maybe the day you're going to make a purchase, but it's something that you're going to research and get information, and you're going to then associate that you got that information from Macy's. You're going to get them more up funnel, and you won't see it as much of a direct response traffic, but you're going to see it as they come back in mid funnel, maybe through paid, but you're going to acquire new customers that way that you wouldn't otherwise. Um, some of the other content that we created is what we call peripheral digital content. This isn't related to products that we sell specifically, and it's not even necessarily lifestyle editorial. Um, but it has to do with places where we see we have expertise. So we have expertise in brands, we have expertise in fashion, um, and we know a lot because of our data. So we created things like this, where this is looking at um, most Instagram fashion brands, and it was all the brands that we carry, and looking at the um, trending of their Instagram accounts over time. And this is an interactive piece um, that essentially led to a lot of straight traffic. We seeded it to some influencers and some, some large publisher sites. Um, what this did, it got us some SEO benefit from related searches and from related content here, but it also got us a lot of links, which these are you know, non-paid links. It's just organic content that was picked up that other uh, sites wanted to use. And so those links coming in, again, all boats rise. We, we were able to scale and have everything rank higher because of this kind of content that has the ability to go viral. And then the last piece, um, and this is where we're trying to create more efficiencies. And it's really looking at organic and paid in a more integrated version. Um, it always surprises me when companies and Macy's is guilty of it as well, um, don't really look at the paid and the organic together. That they instead are looking at things in silos and really only worried about the ROI of each tactic instead of saying, how do we be most efficient and how do we only pay when we need to pay? How do we make sure that we're, we're looking at efficiencies and we're, we're spending really wisely? Um, especially with large organizations, I find that the paid budget can just continue to grow and grow. They'll continue to go back and say, we need more. Google says that we can spend 200 million this year. Of course, they'll say that always. Um, and so instead of just growing the budget, though, and saying that our return is less, but we still need to pay it, it's looking critically at the campaigns one by one and saying, do we need to spend? Are there places where our organic can pick up instead? And that's really something that our organization has started to do. Um, and it's really about testing here. Um, because up in this, the top branding area, um, this is for just a Macy's search. Someone comes in, they type Macy's alone, likely you're going to click on the paid ad. What we find is that we have the least control over this part. We don't know the volume. The volume depends on offline tactics, it depends on um, what's going on in the market, it depends on economic conditions. So we don't have a lot of control over the volume that's coming in, over you know, whether they're going to convert, over what they do. Because these are people who are just searching for our brand. But oftentimes I find that brands will roll in the return of their trademark with their non-trademark. And it makes it very difficult to see when you're actually getting incremental return. Um, and again, this is something that usually brands don't consider whether or not they should even do it. They just keep doing it and paying more as there's more demand. Um, and I think this is where there's the biggest opportunity. So testing. Um, and what I'm talking about here is making sure that you're looking at that trademark campaign. Um, it's something that I know a lot of paid advertisers will, will kind of laugh at and scoff and give me article after article about how you need to own your brand space. And I think that was true previously. Um, there were previous articles, and I know one of the best practices was have both, and they'll click on the organic. That was always the tried and true method from 10 years ago. And I think that was definitely true then, and it was true when the customers didn't trust paid search. They would see the ads, they wouldn't click on them, they knew it was weird, they weren't used to it because it was new at the time. And so we knew that it gave you a lift, it gave you additional real estate, but people usually clicked on the organic anyway. That's not the case anymore. And we know that because that's why Google's pushing more ads. They know that the customer isn't reacting negatively to ads anymore, and so they can push more and they are more trusted. Um, and so I think, though, that also tells us that we have the ability to pull out if we don't need to pay for those trademark um, ads and instead test into places where maybe if your organic is um, strong enough and your brand is strong enough that you don't necessarily need to pay for those clicks. 
I think the most recent study that was done on it was an eBay study. Um, they did this test in several different areas of the country, um, and they turned off their paid just to see what would happen, because they wanted to prove out this test. Um, they had some students at University of Cal um, do a statistical analysis to see where they actually lost traffic. Here, uh, top line is organic, bottom line is paid. Um, they made up nearly all of their traffic that they would have lost on paid through organic. Um, and they found through here that they don't actually need to pay for their trademark. Um, this study, of course, was trashed by most agencies that sell paid, by Google, by anyone essentially who could profit off of additional paid dollars. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I think it's an interesting study, and it's something that I'm not saying we should all go out and stop paying for our brands. I think there's, there's definitely caveats. Is your brand strong enough? Um, do you have a lot of competitors in your space? Does your brand also mean something else? You know, there are considerations to think about. But for a brand where you don't really have competitors, you're nationally known or globally known, um, does it actually make sense? Will your organic just pick up whatever you lose and paid? And then can you reinvest dollars that you're saving into your increased mobile spend? Because you're going to have to spend more there. Um, again, I don't think it's a, a straight answer of, yes, you should stop. But why aren't we testing this more? Um, I think this is something that we should be doing if we want to improve the efficiencies, because Google will keep pushing ads on us, and we need to find a way to be smarter about the ads that we, that we serve. Um, so overall, I think the, the goal here is to just think about what we can do as these changes take place. Um, the change isn't going to stop. Um, actually, just in the last month, as many of you know, the same kind of change was rolled out to desktop. So we don't have a right rail anymore. We now have four ads on the top and more ads on the bottom. I imagine we'll start to see a similar, maybe not quite as severe change in organic and paid traffic on desktop, because we're going to have more paid clicks. Um, and so it's going to be something to think about even for desktop. Do we need to change something there? Do we need to, again, look at trademark to see what we can do, and then find that white space to make sure that um, we're capturing everything we can up and down the funnel? All right, just some things to think about. Um, that's all I have. Thank you.